Greetings, everyone. Father Hogan here. Good to be with you. It was quite fascinating to watch a gentleman like Wayne Gretzky in his prime dominate the game of hockey. One of the greatest gifts that he possessed was the vision that he had to see the play uh, many, many plays ahead. And I think for us, that's a great analogy that we can use in our spiritual lives as well. Because think about it. You know, Wayne Gretzky wasn't really that big, or wasn't really that fast, but the way in which he could use his mind and anticipate the game made him outstanding. That allowed him to garner all the scoring records and assist records and so forth. So, if you haven't done so already, feel free to pause the video and to go grab your Bibles. Okay, and let us begin. Our Gospel is taken from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John. Here Jesus is making it very clear of the necessity for the spiritual vision. Take a listen in this first opening passage. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. Again, having that spiritual sight, it's almost like if I were to write on the chalkboard, two plus two equals four. Now I want you to go back in your brains to think when you're just learning the basic mathematic facts. Two plus two equals four, one plus one equals two. How you may have struggled with that to see that and really understand that intuitively. And as a teacher, if I would have just said, look, two plus two equals four. Do you see it? Do you see it? It takes a little bit for us to internalize, to intuit it, and allow that to be rationally smart. Uh, something certainly appropriate that we can live within our lives and we can believe that to be true. But until then, it's still just simply numbers on a board. And Jesus, what he's doing is trying to show his disciples, those that were gathering around, that don't you see, the Father and I are one. That Jesus' life is only seen in relation to the Father. But the reason why that's a problem is because we can't really see the Father. Because, again, the Father is a spirit. God becoming flesh. And we see the gift of the Incarnation. So now what we need to do, as men and women of faith, is to ask God, to beg and to plead God for this great gift of spiritual vision. That we can start to see with the eyes of faith. You see, because to the world, it's foolishness. The reason why it's foolish is because it's not something uh, like science, in which we can use <clears throat> excuse me, inductive and deductive reasoning practice, uh, um, practices. Again, there's nothing against science or using the inductive or deductive reasoning, the scientific method, but faith and reason are meant to complement one another. But they both, yes, have different subject matters, but as we all know, that truth can never contradict itself. So why is this all important? It's because once we see through the darkness, through the nothingness of simply numbers, that we can see something intelligible, something smart, not just simply the end of a math equation, where we can see truth. And that's what Jesus is. For he is the truth, and the truth will set you free. If we take it, John, for his word, even in John 14, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the kind of spiritual vision that we need, especially now in these difficult and dark times, that we can see that God is truly helping us and putting us on the right path. Because if, again, we're like Wayne Gretzky, that the game not only becomes simple, but it becomes fun. Because it's not just a set of plays, but rather we can interpret them in such a way to our advantage. God is always trying to give us the best, giving us the greatest opportunities to succeed and thrive in this life. And the only way that we can do that is seeing Jesus Christ as the gift of the Father. And this Father again wants to set us free. Let's allow God to set us free today by receiving this light of faith and to walk in confidence and boldness. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, we continue to thank you and praise you for how you continue to enlighten our minds and hearts. Help us to get rid of this twofold sense of ignorance and sin in our lives to see how you're continually wonderfully blessing our lives with this great gift of truth. Open our minds of faith today walk in light and peace. For we make these prayers in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we have a good Father. In allowing Him to control our lives in such a way that He wants to lead us to freedom. He is a gentleman. 
who respects our ability to choose. Let us choose the good, that God may continue to bless us each and every day as we make decisions to see Him in our lives of faith.